Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM22. It's career mode, and this is episode 40. We're at Amstel Gold for the first time. Not an objective. We're just going to see what kind of result we can get on this one. I certainly suspect, as it's punchy, and, you know, punchy is probably our strongest, that we could do well here. We've gotten a lot of wins in the, these types of races uh, this season. But can we win here? It's not that punchy in terms of the finish. There's still a bit of sprint to do. So Amstel Gold can be a really tricky one. Uh, it's really well suited to a Vanderpool, Van Art, And, well, we're not quite in that wheelhouse. So compared to other punchy profiles, this one is maybe a little more challenging for us to possibly get a result on. I think at the minimum top 10 today, but uh, I don't know how much higher we can score than that. Race day condition wise, that's absolutely a help. And this is the type of race day condition that we will traditionally do well on. But we'll see. Pithy plus five, Arietta plus three, McKellar plus three. Uh, and those are kind of your lead guys, but Bogley, very punchy. He's our highest rated guy, but he's got the negative race day condition taking him out of leadership status, but we might attack with him uh, as a late thing to try to split because I don't think this is your typical sprint train type race. Uh, Vermark, another candidate to do well. So we, we really have, I'd say, five potential winners in this group. Uh, Culverwell and Frigo, neither one of them are bad. They're just not strong, as strong climbers and with all the undulation uh, that we have here you figure it's going to take a fair bit of climbing those two would just eventually fall off so only two domestiques five potential leaders and we are absolutely going to use up one or two of those guys to make moves to try to attack in the later stages of this the breakaway of six had a seven minute gap it's already been cut in half and we're also at 120 Ks and at a very good opportunity to go ahead and get water. Let's use Bogley for this because, yes, he's gotten 80 hills, but he's just mm, a little off. And I want those domestics to keep our two real favorites for the day fresh, as can be. Uh, we are almost on the verge of starting to get, because this is a long race, uh, we're, we're almost into that phase where... Maxims, uh, the rider maximums will be impacted here pretty soon. You'll see guys uh, starting to have that wither away a little bit as we're going to start putting our foot down a little more. Gap has been holding for a while, but it's still pulled back about 30 seconds over the last uh, 20 Ks or so. We also still need to get water one more time, but we're going to get into this flattest stretch of the back two-thirds of the race really just a couple little hills here for the next while okay up to 79 again trying to hold position as best we can but not exceed the power output by much right really keep it tight okay I think it's time to go down to an 80 and just about time to get water that final time as well. And the peloton is beginning to split, I think, probably yo-yoing for now, 41 away. And yes, it is yo-yoing, but the first riders are beginning to get dropped. And the front group has lost another minute. And Bogley, I think we are close enough to get water here in just a moment. I want to time it with this hill. Go ahead and use the hill to uh, drop back rapidly and then have water by the time we reach the top so that he can then be recovering. And there you go, back into place. Okay, now check it on the legs. Uh, Vermark's still looking pretty good on his own there. Uh, Bogley's not looking so great right now. I'm wondering if I need to, because Vermark is looking pretty dang strong. Vermark does have 81, 75, but he's also got a little more stamina uh, than what we have here with Bogley. But Bogley should recover, and that's the reason why I was kind of leaving things in a different state. Uh, inside 60k, we're done with water, so that's that's very good. And it's almost time to start thinking about the long moves 
uh, as we close in on that front group. I think Bogley's kind of the first guy that I would want to go for. Because I think he's the least likely because of the race day condition of the five. So Bogley, let's start coming forward. 50k. In fact, others. Others in the same boat thinking it's time. For now, holding position, waiting for a punchy moment to uh, actually make the escape. And it looks like we're pulling this first group back. Down to just three from the original break, down to just 30 seconds on their gap. He's off a little bit here with Bogley. And here comes the attack moment. And now we go for a mild escape. Push a little bit harder. Three riders going clear. Martinez Almeida, and there you go, front six. The pack is back on level terms with the breakaway group. Okay, we have two guys clear. Yes, Bobby is clear, but he is being attacked by Martinez and does not have a ton left in the tank. Meanwhile, let's get these guys uh, a little more sound in their positioning. Bump them up to an 83 now. Bogley. The riders are in a portion above ten percent. Here's where he can gain a little bit more. The breakaway is not to everybody's liking. The Peloton has nope. significantly increased its speed. Gel. He's gonna be on his own here in a moment. We'll just leave him on automatic. He's done. Okay, that's now one rider left away. It's Martinez. Thirty five K to go. Is yo yoing checking in? The two, the big climb is is the one after this. Uh, that that is where things are going to get interesting, and we definitely want to see somebody attack. Toins, Alaphilippe, McKellar, it's your turn, buddy. Keller, all he ended up doing there was splitting the gap. Leave these guys behind, can we? He's not escaping very well. All he's really doing is pulling back the front three. Now he has escaped as we go to uh, have the big climb of the day. He's got to ease off now as he still sprints and gels up. This, by the way, is not my specialty. He's classics typewriter attacks what we have is three guys still looking really strong two guys not and uh, five guys let's go free go out front so free go moving forward clover well to follow then remark and then we're looking at either Ariata or Pivy, and I'm thinking Ariata for sure, yeah. I know he's only got the plus three. He's got such an advantage compared to his teammates. Now we get on with it. McCullar is riding in no man's land as he approaches the climb and is pushing through there. And Frigo is supposed to be going 99, but he can't get through. Martinez apparently was able to attack again. Not sure how he can do that. Culverwell fading very fast. Uh, Frigo is here. How is Vermark way back here? What happened? Everybody was at the front. And Vermark just lost a ton of ground. Ton of ground. What in the world just happened? How were we like 30 bike lengths behind Culverwell when we were supposed to be following him? I do not know, but our race is very much in jeopardy. McKellar is he's out of energy, so I mean this is this is it. We got three guys. And there is not much climbing left to do. Uh, we do wanna go for Mark 99 as he's yellow bar only now. 
And chase, 17, chasing 17, chasing two. The two, Alphalip and Martinez. And we are slowly dropping some riders from here. And Vermark has made contact. Now it's 32. McKellar is here. McKellar has a little bit of red bar and a little bit of yellow bar so we can get him in line. And Vermark just keep pushing for the last little bit he's got left. Bring us to the front. And then McKellar will give us just a little bit as well. With red bar, he's probably going to be faster than the mark was. Acceleration by Martinez. And we'll have two guys, but it is still 19k to go. But this is the area. This is the area where things are going to happen. So if Arietta is going to have much of a chance. Pithy's the better sprinter, by the way. And we are nearly done with all of that, so maybe I need to be swapping out Pithy for uh, Arietta in this. Do we want to try to attack and be bold and go for it, or are we going to try to settle for a top 10? Looks like Alaphilippe is fading. And I'm going to swap these two. Put Arietta on uh, relay. Now it's down to 13, so the group is very much struggling and fading, and a lot of guys don't have much left in the tank. Arietta gel, 13k. And we've caught Alaphilippe. We've nearly caught Martinez. And we drop yet another rider. Now it's your front 15. Profile the rest of the way suggests that one little itty bitty hill means we are looking very much at a sprint 11k Arietta keeping pressure on so nobody recovers and just line. trying to set up pithy and stop others from you know doing what they're trying to do right now which is attack and break up front and we drop two nearly a guaranteed top 10 now 7.8 Okay, now Arietta's just going to have to do what he can do here, and we are down to 10. Both guys into the top 10. Arietta, uh, Pithy is going to sit on at a 99, and Arietta, follow as long as you can to get your top 10. As two riders go clear on the last little hill, so this is Pithy's moment. This is Pithy's moment. Leave this group behind and go with those front two and claim a top three if you can. But we get blocked off as we try to escape, but the others are attacking as well. Uh, and we're definitely not attacking hard here. Uh, but let's relay, relay, relay. Okay, it's now seven chasing one. Arietta. Oh, sorry, guys. My bad. You've been stuck like that for a long time, haven't you? Okay, we still have a little energy left with 4k to go. Not much for the sprint. Shockman's going to win this thing, it looks like. Uh, as we don't quite have what it takes to really chase, but I can see some shoulder set bobbing for a few of these guys pretty bad. 2.5k to go. Uh, but it looks like we are riding for second. And probably not going to beat all of them because, you know, Vanderpool, Simmons, Ballas, Healy, Van Art, you know, you know Hennison, we're, we're almost like the weakest guy of this group. We probably are the weakest guy of this group. But we're going to go a little early. We're going to go a little early and see if we can surprise them. It is a technical finish after all. And that push to the line so far has worked. We have escaped. Second place. Second place. Okay. Not the win, and of course we're always hoping for the win, but I told you at the beginning of this thing that I really did not think the profile quite suited that one for us, and we get second and ninth. I figured, yes, absolutely, we have the strength to get into the top ten, but I thought much higher than, you know, maybe squeezing out fifth place was going to be pretty challenging and pretty iffy and even right there at the end you know as we were fighting for between second and eighth i was still looking pretty touch and go i was looking at those guys and van art was the only one who the shoulders were bobbing pretty bad 
And I'm looking at Johannesson going, okay, we could probably beat him. But literally everybody else in that group is going to be favored over, over Pithy. So the fact that we were capable of uh, making the right move at the right time, right at the finish there, to escape and get away and go clear of that group and get second makes it disappointing that Shockman was able to escape a little earlier, get away and hang on himself. But uh, yeah, second's good. Very good. Podium. Flesh Wallone, and it is a top five objective for us. Couple stars, so it's not nothing. I think I only managed to get maybe one or two guys uh, locked in for this objective, as we have a lot of them. And this one didn't fit greatly into our calendar. But despite that, our, our draw was pretty poor. It's a net zero today, so uh, not good. And uh, what it was compared to what it should have been, I, I think it's about a minus four. I mean, I think we should have had a, a plus four today. So uh, didn't turn out great, but we're looking okay, at least for two guys. A lot of red within the team, but McKellar and Culverwell do look okay. This race can go a lot of different directions, but with the Murdahui, you know, at the end of it, it's steep. It's definitely a puncher's type race. And I've certainly won on this one before, but I, I feel like I haven't in a, in a while. Uh, so we'll see what we can do with this one today. Uh, hanging on at a, uh, as we go to hit the Murdahui the first time, hanging on at a 75 is definitely not the way to go for now. Uh, once we get to the top of the Murdahui here this time, as we hit the plateau up there, we do very much need to send uh, Coop, who's the last man on road right now for us, uh, send him back to retrieve water, and we can even start it near the top, but you know, we could easily see field splits. We don't want to kind of, we don't want to go too early with that, and now's a good time for him to do so, uh, and off we go. Field does split just a little bit behind us, and it looks like it kind of settles in on about 130 riders as, you know, those in the back were desperate to slingshot their way forward and, and remain in the group. And we're seeing a lot drop back at the moment. Is that because they're feeling comfortable and confident, or are they fading? Or are they going to get water themselves? 48k to go. This will take care of water for the remainder of the day once Coop finishes up here. But yeah, he's minus three. Not helping much. His stamina is not very good to begin with, just a 70. And then minus four on that is uh, pretty painful. He's clearly the, the weakest for us at the moment, but he did his task. We're going to gel up for him. I really like the gel system, the re energy recovery system, the energy system in general uh, that they have on the Tour de France title. You know, the game might be an absolute mess of a game that is nothing but bugs and it barely, barely runs, but it does have some nice systems in there uh, that I would love to see cross over into this, especially as it's a lot of the same development team. There's a lot of crossover in the team. Uh, there are individuals that work just on PCM and individuals that work just on Tour de France, but there's a lot of crossover uh, individuals that that do work for uh, for cyanide that that you know see both games as we come around the second time third time will be the decisive one we're going to hit that plateau with the last real flat area that we have the rest of this thing and frigo and coop are done uh pithy who is supporting for mark has gotten through bano is going to need to take over for one of these guys coop is probably the one we want to take over for now as he is struggling backwards so go ahead and protect him. And use your gel, and we're seeing a big attack. Woot. Woot. Uh, 22k out. You know what? Let's let's do this thing. Uh, otherwise, it's going to use a ton of energy. McKellar, Cole for well, for Mark, that's your order. And then Bono, Pithy, and Pithy needs to gel and get on with it right now. Those two are already done, so just leave them be. And 
Pithy bring us forward, and we've already answered, responded to the attack, but there's still four guys right here, four big-time favorites that went forward, went to clear, and we're going to be down to four in just a moment with 19k to go. It's a long ways out still. Pithy is done, but we were waiting while we were descending there. We don't need to go 99 here with Bunno. 90 is probably good. This will help us. It's still a minute and a half to the front four as David Godu, Simmons, Johannesson. I'm sorry about Johannesson, by the way. Here, Here is Johannesson's profile. The guy is elite. He has developed so well. 78, 82 with 78 acceleration, 76 stamina. He is absolutely a contender. Uh, and I was totally wrong to, to suggest otherwise in our last race. Okay, but no, it's done. On to Vermark. And we do want to put foot down this time because we want to emerge at the front and put the field under pressure. Down to 54. Four at the front. Still 52 seconds away as Vermark pushes on with 11K to go. Uh, we don't have to push as hard now, but we'll go 95 through here. Give him a little bit longer to uh, keep the pressure on, but not go crazy. 37 seconds. We will catch them. Not by much. No wonder they do have some quality in that group. Cloverwell, McKellar still looking good. They are fine for the end, and Vermark is not going to make it through this climb, so Cloverwell will take over here in a moment. Back now to a 96 right away, and we're going to close the gap down to these front four here very quickly. And we are in contact, and Colwell is going to continue pushing on to the front as we go through the penultimate climb complete. And we are set up now for our final attack on the Murdoqui. Gel up. Cold for well. Pressure on. 47 guys, but we are right at the front. Now 41. 22 as it yo-yos. That now guaranteeing a top 25, but we need a top 5 here. 1.9k, so 99 for Culverwell giving me his attack, and now it's 19. And on to McKellar. McKellar going for it. This is such a hard, hard thing to do here as McKellar is boxed in a little bit, but he is going to find some space and get through. 500 meters, red bar is gone. He is currently in the top five. He's got the yellow bar to keep pushing. He is not going to win, but he is going to get a top five. He's not going to get a podium, but he's got a top five. It's Simmons, Alaphilippe, Gregoire, McKellar, ahead of Pagatur, Bagioli, and Gaudu, Paulus, Johannesson, Schachman, same guys mostly from the last race. We squeeze our way this time into fourth place, doing just enough to get that objective met. Of course, they don't really matter as we've been hitting our objectives for a long time, but here recently, as we were quick simming, we were not hitting all of our objectives. So it was nice to get back in there and get one done. And we're on to our final classic objective that we have, and it's one of our bigger objectives. We are targeting this one. Just looking for a top 10 though, which should be quite achievable under the circumstances, and this is also one of the reasons why Flesh Malone was not something we were able to really put much into, because we put more into this one, so a lot of guys have targeted this race. As a result, we've got some good race day condi conditions and do have high hopes for the day, but at a 73, we're, we're going to fade here quite quickly, so let's start upping that so we can uh, hold position a bit longer. Uh, seven riders in the break, they over that climb, we're able to pull out a little bit more. So they are starting to dig a little bit deeper to try to hold us at bay. But with less than three minutes, uh, and we've been closing them down for a while, uh, I don't think they're going to hang on terribly long. Uh, certainly not without diminishing their strength in numbers by a bit. Uh, it's, it is out to three and a half minutes. So. Meanwhile, our domestiques are already starting to feel the pressure. This is a long race, and we've got 77 kilometers still to go as Culverwell. What is even, like, Culverware's, Culverwell is spinning circles. These guys are up the road. I mean, why why are you trying to stop to, to get there? I, I don't understand. 
he uh, literally was spinning circles going nowhere while on protection duty. That was strange, uh, and that obviously did me no favors, as even though Coverwell might be the weak man uh, on the day, was certainly going to be useful. That was, that was a strange bug. I have not seen that, quite that, in uh, quite some time. We're going to make contact here very quickly and then uh, back off. But I could see that there is some group separation happening like right in front of us, and he's lost those guys momentarily. Down to 115. Let's set him to auto. Looks like he's gone, just just like that. A uh, little freak thing there. So we need to reestablish what we've got going on up here. Uh, we were riding for McKellar and I think Pivy because of the sprint. All right, longest, hardest climb, just 4K, 6%, which is why it's mostly a Ayuso. Oof. Did, Ayuso did quite a good job at La Vuelta, which, by the way, a Venipol. What, what a ride from a Venipol to win La Vuelta. Uh, I said a couple of years ago that... I saw him winning a Grand Tour in two to three years' time, and then he had quietly not been living up to expectations, and then all of a sudden La Vuelta comes along, and he he dominated it at every turn. And yes, I know it's a shame Roglic crashed out, but honestly, <laughs> Roglic did that to himself, totally did that to himself. Uh, that silly little attack to, to pick up a few seconds is not the way you're going to come back and, and win the race uh, at that stage at that point of that stage he was never going to gain more than a few seconds on that so why make that desperate effort to go out there as we're seeing a lot of guys on the attack here and waiting for some teams to respond uh, so it doesn't need to be me. There's a lot of fatigue in the legs here, and really just Bono for Mark and McKellar uh, are, are kind of hanging in there. But seeing some new breakaway riders go up the road is a little worrying, especially considering the names that have gone up the road. But there is still a chase happening here. So that was... They're going again. They're going again. It's 43K. It's way too far out for me to be the one responding to this. Good thing that there are teams ready to take up that mantle. Coop. And gel. And free go. So nine have gotten away. Just 17 seconds ahead. Plus the six that are still out there. So they've only lost one from their overall strength, and we've made contact yet again. Taking a little bit out of the legs of those guys. Okay. As we climb the right out, we need to uh, climb at a much higher tempo here. So 85 it is. As five of those nine attack again, here come the next three. And here comes the response from EF until they decide to also attack and everybody sits up. The NOX now the ones to respond. Thank you for doing so. And we see just one rider fading at the moment. There's still a couple chasers. Now there's 14 at the front and they have a minute and I'm watching that clock very, very closely. Coop and Frigo are done, and there is no longer a breakaway, and we're at 31k. So now we can start thinking about sending Bono. To go up the road with these guys, so we know we don't have to attack. Or chase, that is. And leave it up to other teams. 
I know I'm struggling to find a gap here at the moment. This is not an attacking type so moment. If those guys were chasing, the right? They sat up speed. and now they chase again. So as those five are being chased, that is not our business. Uh, we are getting close now though with 25k to go. So we have really just two climbs left uh, with the secondary part to the ultimate decisive climb of the day. So maybe this is where we push, diminish the field, and stop the attacks, and then, you know, save the last couple guys for the sprint. Pithy's who I'd like, but it's going to be a McKellar day. Uh, so we're going to use Pithy earlier. He's just doesn't have much left in the tank. In fact, he's the one to follow right now. So we've got four guys. Uh, Vermark. No. It's about the sprint. So, Pithy. There could be an attack here, so we want to get to the front. And, of course, there is. It's relentless attacks. And where are your teammates, my friend? That's six went clear. Of course, we need just a top ten, but that's not my goal. Dash, not my goal. We need water. Uh-oh. 33 riders left in the group, but this is that pivotal time where this group's going to get really small, so uh, we will figure that out. Pithy somehow going forward as two riders go, but he is done. I saw it. I saw it. I just somehow saw that they were also sitting up, so I'll go to take over because here comes that main climb. We don't want to be too far back when it starts. Eighteen K. I know going to push on a little bit. Pivy, get to the back here. Break that toe for anyone who's trying to follow us. All right, good position as we go to the base of the climb, and we speed it up to about a ninety-eight here. As those guys are now going flat out, and Bono is going to have to push with everything he's got now. I can see this group splitting big time here in just a moment. How is this still 43 riders? Now it's not. Now it's 27. Secondary part of the climb. And Vermark and McKellar. Can we split the group further? Vermark's got the yellow bar to just kind of keep pushing, and McKellar will refresh a bit. Meanwhile, take that brief second to, you know, Swift do this and this as Bono's about to get dropped and we're going to see a lot less than 27 here in a moment. Figured it would be less than 22 though. It's a lot of riders left. 10k to go. A lot of it downhill, so for Mark, is going to push on as hard as he can with that yellow bar. 21. Leading out McKellar, obviously, with the descent coming. We don't have the numbers to do that sneaky attack like we did before. 6k to go, and a bunch of them are trying to do the sneaky attack anyway. So Vermark is handling it. McKellar, gel up. 21 riders. Coming up on the finish, Vermark's going to get a little bit of red bar here because of the descent. 3.6, ah, that's a little further out than I thought we were at this point. But it's so technical. 2.5. On to McKellar. Making the move. Here we go. Final kilometer. And the red bar is gone, but we're going to get swarmed here. Jeez, it's still a top 10 though. Red Bar just didn't quite get us there. Boy, Grigoire takes the win ahead of Martinez. Bardet. It's only 12. It's only 12. Okay. Beat Pagacha and Avenipol. <laughs> 
two Grand Tour winners right behind us that are absolutely capable of winning a classic like this one. Palace and Vermark in uh, 1718. Hershey only 20th. Strong field. Very, very strong field. And I, I thought we were going to easily get that top 10 there at the end with that move. Clearly went about 100 meters too early on that one. Uh, but that was the timing of when Vermark was out. So it was it was kind of energy consumption wise. It was what we had to do when we had to do it. I knew it was too soon and it almost worked. But in that last 100 meters, those guys all went with me. They just had endless amounts of energy and we didn't. Ours was finite. Theirs was infinite. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.